The only two constants in life are death and taxes. And if you're like most people, these things are equally scary. So you put all your effort into either delaying or ignoring them. While you may have to come to terms with death in your own way, you'll be happy to know that you don't have to live in fear of tax season. Taxes are the government's way of encouraging people to do what's best to keep the economy running. If you're doing what the government wants, then you'll be rewarded by paying less in taxes. It's as simple as that. Today, you'll learn how to change your facts to greatly reduce your taxes and save money for yourself. These tricks are all provided by the tax laws of most modern first world countries. Let's get started. Did you use to earn pocket money as a kid? Maybe you got money from your parents for shoveling snow or cleaning the windows. Chances are you didn't really care where the money came from. You were just happy to have it and spend it. Well, you're not a kid anymore, and you're probably looking to earn a lot more than pocket change. There are different ways you can get money, and they are not taxed equally. There are four types of earners. Employees working for a salary, the self-employed, big business owners, and investors. It's these last two that are taxed at the lowest rate. Think about it. What does the government want? More jobs are good for the economy. New jobs are created by businesses and entrepreneurs, so the government rewards these people by lowering their taxes. What else does the government want? Affordable housing. Once again, governments offer huge tax breaks to real estate investors because they want to encourage that sort of behavior. You may be thinking, that's great, but what if you're on the employee or self-employed side of the spectrum? It's simple. If you want to get the tax benefits, you're going to have to shift your income into one of the other areas. It's not as hard as it seems. Thousands of people all over the world take courses in business or investment and change the way they earn. Now let's look at the different ways you can receive income. Think of your income as if it were filling up one of five buckets, each with a different amount of holes through which money can be lost to tax. The first bucket is earned income. This one has the most holes in it. You're going to lose a lot of money to income and employment taxes. Try to stay away from this bucket. Let's call the next one your ordinary income bucket. This is income you might be getting from your pension or retirement plan. This still receives the highest income tax, but it doesn't get the employment tax like the first bucket. The next bucket is for investment income, things like capital gains, interest, and dividends. This income is taxed at a much lower rate and in some cases, not at all. The fourth bucket is for gifts or inheritance. In most countries, the tax is paid on the side of the person giving the money, so nothing is lost when it lands in your bucket. Finally, you have the passive income bucket. This is money that you receive from a business or investment which isn't managed by you personally. This is taxed at a regular rate, but there are many ways to reduce this amount. So, how to patch the holes in those buckets? Let's find out. Life isn't fair, and neither are taxes. You can complain about it, but what's that going to do? A better method is to join the side that's receiving the benefits. That means becoming an entrepreneur or investor. Once you start a business or make some smart investments, a whole world of money-saving options opens up in the form of deductions. In the right circumstances, almost anything can be deducted. The government wants to encourage individuals who put money into the economy with the goal of producing, not consuming. This means that if the purpose of the expense is to produce more income, you can deduct it in your taxes. If you like going out to dinner, invite a business partner and discuss growth opportunities and it suddenly becomes a deductible expense. Or if you love traveling to a particular city, invest in property there and claim all your travel expenses. But there's one type of deduction which sits above all the others. It's the queen of deductions and it's called depreciation. Depreciation is like magic. Say you own some sort of physical asset that produces income, this could be a building or even your car if you use it for work. You can actually deduct a portion of the cost of that building every year for a certain number of years. It costs you nothing, so you're making money appear from thin air. To fully take advantage of the miracle of depreciation, make sure you're deducting as much as you can. For example, when calculating the total cost of a building you own, don't forget about any landscaping or improvement. These can be deducted separately, and because they depreciate faster, you will get a bigger deduction than if you treated the whole building as one cost. You should document and file every receipt or piece of evidence of a financial transaction. In the event of an audit, it's invaluable to be able to quickly provide the required documentation to the government. 
Luckily, in the digital age it's easier than ever to keep things properly documented. Just scan or take a picture of your receipt whenever you get one and keep it stored on your computer or phone. Keep everything in order and you can deduct all your work expenses without a worry in the world. Your options if you decide to go the investment route are extensive and varied. However, there is one area that can earn you a little bit extra in tax savings in almost every country. In fact, if you invest properly and seriously in this area, you should never have to pay tax on your cash flow at all. What is this magical tax shelter? Real estate. The trick is to always be buying more. Here's how it works. Say you begin your real estate investment by buying several single-family homes. You get a nice cash flow from these. You collect your depreciation deductions and the houses increase in value. However, as you take the depreciation, you reduce a thing called your tax basis. This is the purchase price of the property. When your tax basis reaches zero, you stop receiving depreciation. When you sell the property, you pay tax on your gain, the difference between the tax basis and the sales price. The lower the tax basis, the greater this gain, and therefore the more you will be taxed. You essentially pay back your depreciation deductions and tax when you sell the property. But you can avoid this tax entirely by simply buying another property for the same price as the one you sold. This process is called a like-kind exchange. It means you can continuously put off paying capital gains tax on a property. This gives you the freedom to sell a property that has become overpriced or because you simply want to change your investment strategy without getting stuck with the taxes. Say those single-family homes you bought have now become a bit too much trouble. Using the like-kind exchange, you sell all the houses and purchase an apartment building for an equal or greater price. You pay no tax for this sale, but now you're enjoying a greater cash flow than you got from the family houses. But apartments still require a lot of maintenance. Now you want an even greater cash flow with none of the work. So by the same like-kind exchange, you sell the apartments and purchase a retail store which takes care of all the associated expenses itself. Once again, you're not taxed for your gains on the apartments. By this stage, all the depreciation you've been deducting has decreased your tax basis, which means when you sell, you're going to have to pay a lot in taxes. So you shouldn't sell. If you hold onto the property until you die, your tax basis becomes the same as the value of the property. Pass that retail store on to your children and they can sell it for its full tax-free value. While you were alive, you received all the tax benefits from the depreciation. By holding it until your death, nobody has to spend a cent on taxes. Tax law is a beautiful and exciting thing. It has the capacity to be incredibly vague, and in the right hands this vagueness can be twisted and interpreted into all sorts of fantastic wealth amassing opportunities. On the other hand, those who are unwilling or unable to take advantage of its true potential will always miss out. This is why it's of the utmost importance to choose the right tax advisor. You can't do this alone, but you can learn what you need to look for when getting help. A good tax advisor will be passionate about reducing your taxes. They will do everything in their power to find the interpretations that work in your favor. It all comes down to how they look at the tax law. You'd be surprised how many tax accountants are actually afraid of the law. They will read the simple tax guides and stay away from anything they don't understand. This means they won't be giving you the best advice and you'll miss all your tax-saving opportunities. The appeal of these types of advisors is that they are probably cheaper. However, that's the wrong way to look at it. It doesn't matter how much they charge you. Think of it in terms of how much they cost you in taxes. Paying an extra $10,000 a year for a tax advisor might seem like a lot. But if they're saving you an extra $70,000 a year in taxes, for example, then it's definitely worth it. You need a tax advisor who can think creatively. The law isn't a straight line and an accountant who got into the business because they like the certainty and clarity of numbers isn't always going to be able to see this. So, how can you know if a tax advisor is going to be doing the best for you? It's all in the interview. Remember that your tax is based entirely on your facts and circumstances. When talking to a potential advisor, where's the focus? Do they talk about themselves and their business or do they focus on you and your needs? This is a good way to tell if they care enough about you to go the extra mile. You can also tell a lot from what questions they choose to ask you. If they want to know about your dreams and goals, and your experiences and expectations regarding taxes, then they're likely thinking in the right way. Find a tax advisor who knows the law and knows you, and you will never have to be scared of taxes or audits again.